You are listening to the OK Dad podcast. Please leave your message for Oh, oh Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. OK Dad podcast. Let's start this thing. You're listening to my husband talk a lot. <laughs> Bet you thought that intro was going to stay pretty slick, huh? I uh, I really like how at the end of it, my wife gives me a little tease there. I uh, wanted to kind of get a rhythm to the show as I start bringing in different episodes and start interviewing. I got an interview today uh, with a good buddy of mine from that I've known for quite a while. So um, be on the lookout for that episode that's coming up. That's going to be via Zoom. So as I start working through the mic problems, we'll we'll see how it sounds. Hopefully it sounds a little bit better than the Christian Escamilla interview. I'm your host, Brian, and welcome to another OK Dad episode. I kind of want to, like I said, get a rhythm to the show, but I do want to start off with a dad joke. So one of my favorites is, why do cows wear bells? Because their horns don't work. <laughs> Alright, that's one of my favorite ones. I, I just kind of wanted to get started here with this podcast. And there's no real solid way to get started with something. You just have to put one foot forward and start going. Whether it's a podcast, whether it's work, whether it's a project... Whether it's a relationship, like everything has to start somewhere. There's a beginning. And as I've said it before, we're never going to be able to just be perfect, outstanding at something, and just hit it 100% of the time every time we start something brand new. And so that's kind of been on my mind recently as I start this podcast and moreover into fatherhood and parenthood. There's no real way to start. And I started reflecting on this this past day here as we're getting really, really busy at work. There's a ton of meetings that are going on. The leadership team's not able to make it to every meeting. There's a ton of training going on. We have a bunch of new hires starting. And as I'm going through the training, we have a bunch of little small fires that are coming out Every which way at work, we have walk-ins coming in. We have walk-ins with issues from last year coming in. And I'm going through and I'm handling every customer and taking care of them while a dozen other tiny fires are arising and the rest of the team is taking care of them as well. And as I'm taking care of these, I'm also getting questions from a lot of the team members that we have there about current situations that are going on I'm I'm going ahead and answering them and we're taking care of each one and it's to the point to where not even we don't even have enough people that are in the office when everybody's taking care of somebody when the phone rings so as I'm walking by doing all these things the phone's ringing I'm answering the phone and then I'm taking care of that customer as well while I'm actively training a new hire i'm actively having a customer outside that i'm taking care of we don't, we're not allowing multiple parties inside the building right now so just to comply with covid restrictions so as i'm taking care of all these things um, through this there's also meetings like zoom meetings now that i'm attending with different vendors from different locations across the country and I'm coming home and reflecting and wow, like the growth when I started at this company, I started at the at the very bottom, the lowest position that they had available to now being a market trainer, a vendor relations person for our market here in San Antonio to just a very tenured in my role and reflecting back on that. When I first got to the company four and a half years ago, that that was not where I thought I would even be going or looking towards. And it, it, it didn't all happen in one day, is what I'm saying. So as I came home feeling really good about myself, like, hey, I did this, I did that. I was able to resolve so many issues. And yet, 
when I look back, I realize that all came with work. That all came dealing with those issues one at a time throughout those four and a half years. So when we think about parenting, I kind of want you to have the kind of sit the same mindset. We're we're not going to know everything. We we like getting advice from different parents and different people and maybe our own parents about different things that we want to do and and how we want to parent. There are instances where we just have to trust our gut, trust our instincts and parent from that there are times where we're going to fail but it's the times that we fail and learn something from it that we really grow Uh, i mentioned in one of the other podcasts that my son had recently eaten a metal hook turns out he never ate a metal hook been searching for poop for quite a few days now and he didn't eat a metal hook (laughs) And that's just something you learn from. Like, okay, like, obviously now we know he's he's a little bit older, so we want to make sure, yeah, even though we're around and watching him, if we're leaving him alone for a little bit, we need to make sure the stuff that's there, the stuff that he's grabbing, it there's nothing that can cause any kind of, like, harm to him. Also, I remember my... uh My daughter, who recently, I'd say during the COVID, when COVID first started, ended up getting her period and my wife wasn't home and no other female was around. It was just me, my daughter, and I have a really good relationship with my daughter. I'd like to think so myself. I'm sure we all do, but she felt comfortable enough with me to come down and uh she's my stepdaughter and she came downstairs and she goes brian brian and i go yeah mamas what's wrong and she goes i think i started my period and i'm like oh okay and so when you first start thinking about this it's it's really nerve-wracking you're like okay well first off we're gonna go talk to your mom And she came downstairs and her mom's talked to her. So my wife's talked to her plenty of times that, hey, your body's going to be changing. You're going to be growing hair. This is a period. And my wife's a nurse. So she gives her the very, like, broad medical terms for everything that involves having a period. And she she comes downstairs. I'm like, okay, well, uh, go to the restroom. You're going to need to line your underwear with some toilet paper. And then we'll go get some pads. And so the first time going into like a Walgreens or something looking for some pads. Of course, I don't know what to look for. So I'm calling my wife and referencing like, hey, hey, we uh, we need to get some pads. What kind of pads do I get? And so my wife's telling me, you know, this is the kind. I don't even remember what she told me. So being a. Uh, being the okay dad that I am, I ended up buying like one of those big packs from Sam's Club for, it has like 400 pads in it. So we have that and and you have to remember this is their first time ever having, you know, their period. So they don't know what's, they don't know what's happening. And we ended up getting her some pads and then it's, <laughs> kids are gross She's like, oh, how many times do I have to do this? And we're like, I don't know, Cindy. I just know that it comes once a month, and it's for like about a week, and then it's going to come every single month after that. And Cindy's like, well, I don't like having my period. (laughs) So, of course, she doesn't like having her period. Uh, My wife's like, yeah, it sucks. And my wife is pregnant right now, so my wife's not even having her period so she's like, man, I feel so bad because Sydney's having her period and I'm not even having my period. Those are those are instances where like I I felt like I handled it pretty good. Uh given another opportunity, I think 
you know, I can handle it a little bit better. Maybe even buy pads ahead of time for her for that and just being preemptive about it. Now, we can't always go back in times to correct something like that. Had it been, let's say, like soccer practice, we can go back out and practice in soccer. But that's going to be a one-time thing, especially with that. And there's there's plenty of them with kids. There's plenty of them. Uh, another time I kind of just want to talk about is where I did have an opportunity. Cindy is 11, year old, 11 years old. I have her, me and my wife have a chore chart for her so she can do her uh, chores throughout the week. She has tasks each day. She has a task or multiple tasks and she has to check them off. If she doesn't check them off, then I'll go and check them off that they weren't done at the end of the day. And at the end of the week, she ends up getting $5 minus anything that she hasn't completed. Now, if it's a one-off chore, we're letting it go. If it's two or three throughout the week, we're letting it go. Um, we're not like those corporate business types when it comes to her chore chart. But there was a time that I distinctly remember where Cindy has a chore and I, I usually take out the trash in our house. And now that she has a chore chart, that is now one of her chores. And on Tuesdays, she also takes out the garbage can to the side of the curb. Now, I distinctly remember our can being full. And it was going to be on a Thursday that she was taking it out. So the next day, I was going to cut the yard. And it's a pretty good sized yard. So all the lawn clippings take up the full garbage bin it was it was midsummer and she didn't take out the garbage bin so i ended up coming home from a long day of work and noticed that the garbage garbage can wasn't outside and so at this point i'm talking to her i call her down i have a conversation with her cindy like this is a chore um you know you need to be doing it this is how you're getting your money at the end of the week which some of it's going through savings you're going to lower your money Giving her the whole dad explanation on, you know, how important money is. And she gets pretty flustered and upset. And I get after her that she needs to do that. And I send her to her room. She goes she goes and uh, goes to sleep early that night because she missed an important chore for that day. And uh, she Monday came along and I had some time to reflect on myself. And I had a talk with her. And I said, Cindy, I realized that I may not have told you everything that you needed to know. I want you to value yourself in our family. And I want you to know that your chores just aren't chores. Your chores help your mom and me. You're a member of the family. You're a member of the family, and I don't want you to think of it as just a task to get money. The chores are helping out the family first. So when you wash dishes, for instance, you're washing dishes so mom and me can have a clean set of dishes, a clean pan to cook you food. Now, you like getting food, don't you? And she's like, yes. And I tell her, now, for the trash can, I was going to cut the lawn the next day, and I can't cut the lawn now. It's my only day off this week, and because you didn't take the trash out, I couldn't cut the lawn because there was nowhere to put the clippings. And she goes, I'm sorry I did that. You can take, you can take all the money. I don't need the money this week. And I go, no, Cindy, it's not about the money. It's about being part of the family. So I want you to know, like, you may see this as taking out the trash, but to me, you're helping me out because when you take out the trash, now the next day I can cut the lawn, throw all the clippings away, and now I'm happy. 
And because I wasn't able to do that, I was upset. I only had one day off to cut the lawn this week. Now I have to wait till next week. And I had some time to reflect over the weekend. I told her, Cindy, it's it's perfectly okay. I can wait a week. I shouldn't have gotten that mad at you. I should have told you this conversation that I'm having right now. Thursday. Thursday night is when I should have told you instead of waiting until Monday. I shouldn't have gotten upset with you first. But I want you to know that it's not about the money. It's not always about the money when it comes to your chores. And you could also think back to like your work, your projects. It it really shouldn't be, sounds cliche, it really shouldn't be about what you're doing or the end result. A lot of your joy and happiness should come straight from just living. So... So filling out that project, working at a workplace, get fulfillment from doing something. There's a lot of that uh, don't work to, don't live to work, work to live, that, those kind of cliches. But it, it really does come down to it. So if you're, if you're enjoying what you're doing, it, it's, it feels more seamless. But when you go back and and you look at these things like are you really having enjoyment out of it i i know i am and it's not always like that it can't be like that every single day if it was we would just grow tired of it and probably want something else or find something else but we really grow when we learn to struggle when we find opportunities to grow from challenges so i believe that the more we're challenged the more we grow from it and those are the opportunities that we take to learn. Do I feel great about getting upset with my daughter about not doing her chores? No. Do I still get mad at my daughter for not doing her chores? Like, sure, all the time. But I think it's important to have those conversations, even though she's 11, about how important her chores are because it helps the family. And so when I changed her perspective on it, since then... There has not been a day where she's missed the trash. There hasn't been a day where she has not done dishes. And she's still 11. So there's still times where, hey, can you do the dishes? And uh, she'll get up and she's like, yeah, I can do them. So those two main tasks, there's no more of a kind of like the sourpuss attitude. Now with Asher, who's three, he's still got a long ways to go. And so I'll keep you guys updated on that. I just think where we're at and where we grow from, it really comes from challenges. And I think having kids, having a job, a a work-life balance is difficult to maintain everything. So like I've said before, like don't beat yourself up if you're not super dad, if you're not the perfect dad, if you're not the perfect mom. Everybody has flaws. Every single situation is different. Nobody can have the same situation. Social media has it to where everybody's posting their best moments online. Don't compare yourself to those social media moments. It'll, it'll drive you crazy. Worry about what you have in front of you. Worry about your family and take care of them the best that you can. And if you're doing that and if you're happy, like there's, there, there's no need to compare anything else because what you have Nobody else can compare compare themselves to you. So I'd say stay happy with your kids. Make sure you're being involved with them. And get them to do chores the earlier you can. It's hard at first, but the earlier you get them to knock out their chores, the quicker, the quicker you'll have trash taken out on trash day. So early in the morning. So I think Cindy's taking it out right around 6 30 now since she wakes up at 6 30 the first thing she does is put her shoes on those days and goes outside all dry eyed weary let me take the trash out and then we'll hear we'll hear the door clunk that's that's how i'm waking up in the morning now on trash days clunk clunk. i'm like what is that it's my daughter outside takes the trash out Comes back in, clunk, the door closes. Well, at least the trash is out today. All right, y'all. I want to say thanks for listening, but tune in next time. Like I said, I do have an interview coming up. It should be good. Um, 
more to come on that, guys. All right, appreciate it. I'll see you later, okay, dads.